Deep learning is a powerful tool for solving complex problems, but the quality of the training data is critical to the success of the model. Augmentation is a technique used to increase the diversity and quantity of training data by generating new examples from existing ones. Today, we'll be diving into the world of data augmentation, with a special focus on cutout augmentation. So, let's get started. Image augmentation is a technique used in computer vision to artificially increase the size of a training dataset by generating new, altered versions of existing images. This is typically done by applying a series of transformations such as rotation, scaling, flipping, cropping, or changing the brightness and contrast of the image. These modifications help the model generalize better, reducing the risk of overfitting and improving its performance on new, unseen data. Now, let's dive into cutout augmentation. Among the image augmentation methods, the cutout is a regularization technique that randomly masks out square regions of input during training. And it can be used to improve the robustness and overall performance of convolutional neural networks, as it can no longer rely on the presence of specific pixels or regions in the images. The main motivation for cutout comes from the problem of object occlusion, which is commonly encountered in many computer vision tasks, such as object recognition, tracking, or human pose estimation. By generating new images which simulate occluded examples, we are not only better preparing the model for encounters with occlusions in the real world, but the model also learns to take more of the image context into consideration when making decisions. Here's how cutout augmentation works in practice. Let's dive deeper into how cutout works. During training, a random rectangular patch is selected from the image, and all pixels within the patch are set to zero. This creates a hole in the image, which the model must learn to fill in based on the surrounding context. By removing these patches, cutout forces the model to learn more general features that are less dependent on the specific details of the input. Cutout can also be applied in different ways. For example, we can vary the size and shape of the patches, or apply cutout to different regions of the image with different probabilities. This helps to create even more diverse training data, which can improve the performance of the model. So, to sum it up. First select a random location within the input image. Second remove a rectangular patch of a fixed size from that location. Then, feed the modified image to the model for training. The process is repeated for each image in the training dataset. To begin our implementation, we need to install two main libraries, namely Albumentations and TensorFlow datasets. Albumentations is a Python library for fast and flexible transform operations that are optimized for performance, and it does so while providing a concise, yet powerful image augmentation interface for different computer vision tasks. TensorFlow dataset contains a collection of datasets ready to use with TensorFlow. And now, we begin our code by importing the required classes and methods as we see. Then, we define the autotune variable, which denotes the appropriate number of processes that are free for working. Now it's time to download the Flowers dataset. We do so using TensorFlow datasets. This dataset is only split into a training set. Most dataset input pipelines should end with a call to prefetch. This allows later elements to be prepared while the current element is being processed, which leads to improved latency and throughput at the cost of using additional memory to store prefetched elements. The map function applies the given transformation function to the input data. Now let's visualize the batch data. Here, we defined a simple function to visualize pars of the images and labels from the dataset. Now, it's time to define the cutout transformations to be applied to the original image data. The number holes denotes the number of regions to zero out. The max H size denotes the maximum height of the hole. The max W size denotes the maximum width of the hole. The fill value denotes the value for dropped pixels. Finally, it's time to apply the cutout transformation. In this step, we define an augmentation function that apply the cutout transforms on each image. 
Then rescale the pixel value into float range and resize the augmented image into the required size. The augmented images are generated with the same class label as the input image. In this step, we set the shape of both the augmented image and class label. And here, we can see the results of cutout augmentation. At this point, we can walk through the process of building and training a convolutional neural network, CNN, for flower image classification. The process of building a model architecture typically involves creating a series of convolutional layers, pooling layers, and fully connected layers that will process the input images and output the predicted flower labels. With your model architecture in place, the next step is to train the network using your augmented dataset. This involves feeding batches of training data through the network, calculating the loss, and adjusting the weights of the network to minimize the loss. So, cutout augmentation has been shown to improve the performance of deep learning models, particularly in image classification tasks. By forcing the model to learn more robust features, it becomes less prone to overfitting and exhibits better generalization. Some popular use cases for cutout augmentation include object detection and classification in autonomous vehicles and medical imaging analysis, where robustness and generalization are crucial. To sum up, cutout augmentation is an effective data augmentation technique for improving the performance of deep learning models. By removing random rectangular patches from input images during training, the model is forced to learn more robust features, resulting in better generalization and reduced overfitting.